Hello all and welcome to Miss Martin's Classroom. Today's podcast will be featuring a realistic fiction novel and to those who loved when Dimple met Rishi, get excited for this awesome companion novel. Indian American teenager Sweetie is fat. She is also a straight A student, an amazing artist, and an all-star athlete. But somehow her weight always seems to be what's most important to everyone else. Yet, when the Indian mother of Ashish Patel, the school's most jaw-droppingly handsome basketball player, tries to set them up on a date, and her own mother turns them down due to Sweetie's weight, she decides to take fate into her own hands. Chapter 1 Ashish List of totally overrated things Number 1 Love Number 2 Girls Number 3 Love Yeah, again. Ashish Patel wasn't sure why people ever fell in love. What was the point, really? So you could feel like a total chump when you went to her dorm room only to find out that she had gone out with some other dude? So you could watch your mojo completely vanish as you became some soggy, washed-out version of your former, extremely dashing self? Screw that. Slamming his locker shut, he turned around to see Pinky Kumar leaning against the locker next to his, sketchbook in hand, one purple eyebrow up. As usual, she'd probably been born like that, all skeptical. What? He snapped, adjusting his backpack with way more force than necessary. Oh, Pinky blew a bubble with her gum and then continued chewing. She'd drawn all over her black jeans with a silver marker. Her parents would probably be pissed. No matter how often Pinky messed up her clothes for her artistic statements, their corporate lawyer selves would never get on board. So yeah, they'd be pissed. But not as pissed as when they saw she hadn't thrown out that pro-choice is pro-life t-shirt they thought was so vulgar. Still, I am essing, I see. Asking about IMS, irritable male syndrome, was Pinky's common refrain when Ashish was grumpy. According to her, it was about time people began blaming cis men's emotionality on their hormones for a change. I am not. Ashish blew out a breath and began stalking down the hallway, and Pinky fell easily in next to him. She was tall, almost five foot eight, and could easily match pace for pace, which was really annoying sometimes, like right then, when he wanted to get away. So, why do you look all cloudy? I don't know. What does that even mean? Ashish tried to keep his voice mellow, but even he could hear the thread of irritation running through. Celia texted you? Ashish opened his mouth to argue, but then, sighing, reached into his pocket for his cell phone and passed it to Pinky. What was the point? She could read him like an open book, anyway. It wouldn't be long before Oliver and Elijah, his two other best friends, found out, too. Might as well get it over with. I don't care, though, he said in his carefully practiced last night. I am so over Celia. In fact, Celia, who voice? Mm-hmm. Ashish didn't lean over to read the text with Pinky. He didn't need to. The words were burned into his freaking retinas. I'm sorry, Ashish, but I wanted you to find out from me. It's too hard. I can't keep driving myself crazy thinking about you. Thad and I made it official tonight. Ashish had had to read the text about 22 times before it finally sank in that A. Celia was truly going out with someone named Thad. B. She'd been the one to move on first. And C. Ashish's real first relationship had been a spectacular bust. Ashish had been irrationally optimistic that he'd get to the moving on stage first. He'd had to suffer the indignity of being dumped. The universe had to hand him the consolation prize of dating someone new before Celia did, right? Instead, the universe decided to blast out a cute little song called Ashish is a Loser and Everybody Should Know About It. Well, screw the universe. Screw it all the way to the Milky Way. He was Ash frickin' Sheesh. He was debonair. He was brilliant. Okay, so he hadn't had a date in three months. So his basketball game was suffering a little bit. His mojo wasn't gone, though. It was just, uh, on hiatus. 
kicking up its shoes on the table, snoozing, taking a little trip to Hawaii or something. For Frick's sake, even his uber-nerdy Boy Scout-level goody-two-shoes older brother Rishi now had a serious girlfriend. Pinky handed the phone back to him. So what? He glared at her as they rounded the corner to the cafeteria. Oliver, Elijah, he, and Pinky had eaten breakfast together before school started every morning since freshman year. Now that they were juniors, it wasn't even a tradition anymore. It was just a habit. Easy for you to say, Priyanka. You're not the one who's in serious danger of damaging your playa rep. It's Pinky, she said, glaring at him like her eyes were blades that could slice and dice. Only my grandma calls me Priyanka. Ashish felt a prickle of guilt. He was being petty. He knew she hated to be called Priyanka. My bad, he mumbled. Pinky waved a hand. I'm going to let that go because you're obviously having a bad day. But seriously, just date someone else. Come on. She pushed him with her shoulder and scanned the other students at the lunch tables. Oh look, there's Dana Patterson. You've had the hots for her forever. Go ask her out. Right now. No! Ashish pushed back, but not hard enough to knock Pinky over, though he seriously did consider it for a moment there. His palms felt tingly, like they might be on the verge of sweating, at the thought of talking to a hot girl. What the hell was happening to him? I I, I don't want to ask her out, okay? It's, it's just... It's weird to ask girls out in the cafeteria. Pinky snorted. <laughs> really? That's the excuse you're gonna go with? They got in line for breakfast burritos. What's weird? A familiar male voice said from behind them. Ashish turned to see Oliver and Elijah, his two other partners in crime since middle school, saunter up to join him and Pinky. Oliver was taller of the two, but Elijah had the muscles that just about everybody in school swooned over. They were both black, but Oliver was paler than Ashish, while Elijah was a shade or two darker than Pinky. The four of them had been Richmond Academy's Fantastic Four since seventh grade, when they'd coincidentally, some might say fatefully, all concocted the same harebrained excuse about why they hadn't done their book reports on the Scarlet Pippernel. Apparently, Mrs. Kplinger, their English teacher, found it hard to believe that all four of their mother's waters had broken on the same exact day. The excuse was totally ridiculous, considering Mrs. K found out that they were lying with a quick phone call to each of their moms. Despite, or maybe because of, their shared lack of finesse in executing the subterfuge, they became instant best friends in detention. Pinky answered before he could. Ashish suddenly thinks it's weird to ask out girls in the cafeteria. She smiled at him spitefully, and he rolled his eyes. Since when, Elijah said, you ask girls out in the greeting card section at Walmart. What's the difference? They'd laugh until they choked on their own spit if he told them he was nervous. Nothing. Oliver, the more empathetic of his best friends, put his arm around Ashish. Aw, tell Ollie what the problem is. He didn't have to say anything, though. Pinky filled them in on Celia's latest text. I don't get it, Elijah said, frowning. You were already broken up, right? Ever since you went to her dorm room and found out she was with that guy, Thad. So what's the big deal? The big deal, Ashish said, annoyed that his friends really didn't get it, is that I thought this whole thing with Thad was supposed to be temporary. She said it wasn't serious. She was just bored or experimenting in college or whatever. We were still texting. There was still the possibility that we might... He stopped abruptly, feeling more like an idealistic loser than ever. He'd really thought that they might get back together at some point, hadn't he? God, he wasn't the basketball-playing Romeo GQ model he'd thought himself to be at all. He was a freaking Teletubby. And he was now 17, one year away from being an official card-carrying adult. Why couldn't he keep a girlfriend? Oliver, sensing his embarrassment, pulled Ashish closer. I'm telling you, Ash, 
You gotta just get back up on the horse again. Just do it. Celia's doing it. Yeah, man, Elijah added. It doesn't even have to be a particularly nice horse. Any old mare will do. Pinky glared at him. Nice. Elijah made a what face, and Oliver shook his head and sighed. Pinky turned to Ashish. Look, if you're afraid, I can do it for you. I know Dana. Well, sort of. She took a half step in Dana's direction. Ashish grabbed her shoulder. I'm not afraid, for crap's sake. Then do it, Pinky said, crossing her arms. Right now. You won't have a better opportunity. Ashish darted a longing glance at the burritos, and she added, I'll save your place in line. Ashish adjusted his backpack and surreptitiously wiped his definitely <laughs> damp palms on his shorts. Fine, you jerks. Then he walked over to where Dana sat with the other cheerleaders, dressed in a crop top and amazingly tight jeans. She'd probably end up in the principal's office before the day ended over that outfit. But that was a cool thing about Dana. She just never gave up. She looked up as Ashish approached, her face breaking into a smile. Tucking a strand of short blonde hair behind one ear, she slid over on the bench. Ash, come sit with us! Dana had been pretty openly flirty with him at the last few basketball games. Even given that he'd been a ball-fumbling shadow of his former shining captain of the team self, Ashish knew she'd say yes if he asked her. He should ask her. Pinky, Oliver, Elijah were right. The only way forward was through. He needed to just get this first date after Celia thing out of the way. Geez, it had been three months. It was way past about time. Thanks, Ashish said, sitting. He smiled at her friends, Rebecca and Courtney, and then stopped. His smile faded. What was he doing here? His heart was so not into this. It was on another continent entirely. But she suddenly felt like a total jackass. Dana put one hand on his. Hey, are you okay? Her blue eyes were soft and open, concerned. Her friends leaned in too. Fine. Ashish mumbled automatically. Then, as if his mouth had been charmed by an evil, sadistic magician, he found himself adding, Actually, no, I'm not. I got dumped three months ago, and last night I found out that she's making it official with a guy whose parents actually looked at his red, scrunched-up newborn face and said, You know what? This miniature human looks like a Thad Thibodeau. Thad Thibodeau. I met a Thad once at a party, you know. For some reason known only to him, he likes to punctuate every sentence with a thumbs-up sign. And she chose him over me. So what does that say about me, exactly? I'm lower on the dating ladder than Thumbs Thad Thibodeau. Oh, and let's not forget that the reason Richmond Spring Basketball League has won any games these past few weeks hasn't been because of me, it's been in spite of me. I've been performing the same function as the chandelier in the student lounge that doesn't work. I look pretty, but I'm essentially useless. I'd have been more useful serving Gatorade than taking up space on the court. I'm 17, and I'm already way past my prime. Whoa, as she snapped his flapping mouth shut. Had he seriously just said all of that to damn fine Dana and her friends? Ashish thought he should be more embarrassed, but could he really fall any lower? See Exhibit A, playing like a JV basketball noob when he was supposed to be the prodigy captain. Or Appendix B, being dumped for Thumbs Thad. He had already scraped the bottom of the barrel. No, scratch that. He hadn't just scraped it. He was now curled up on its moldy bottom and preparing to take a very long, very soothing nap. Ashish Patel was beyond humiliation. But Dana didn't move away with a nervous laugh like he expected. She took her hand off his and wrapped her arms around him instead. Breakups are the worst, Rebecca added, reaching over the table to pat his arm. The beads on her braids clicked together. I'm sorry. It's totally her loss, Ash, Courtney said, tossing her curly red hair. You're a hottie. Absolutely, Dana said, letting go of him to take his chin in her hand. You're gorgeous. 
Ashish smiled faintly and ran a hand through his hair. Yeah, I know, but thanks. I just feel really... off. Totally normal, Dana said, leaning over to kiss his cheek. But when you're ready to get some revenge, you just let me know, okay? Oh, God. The pity in her eyes. He was a charity case. He was a storm-soaked puppy. Ashish sat up straighter and forced a laugh, which came out hollow and fake. Ah, oh, I'm fine, really, and I, I need to get back to my friends. With deliberate swagger, he pushed himself off the cafeteria bench and, throwing the best approximation of what Richmond Academy girls called the ash smolder their way, sauntered back to his friends. Sweetie. Sweetie held the shampoo bottle up to her mouth. It helped her get into the right headspace. In here, she wasn't just Sweetie. She was sizzling Sweetie, sexy shower singing sorceress. She liked alliteration. What could she say? R-E-S-P-C-T, she belted out. Find out what it means to me. Kayla, Suki, and Izzy shouted back. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, Sweetie sang again. Give me those jujubes, Izzy sang at the same time that Gayla sang, Open Sesame, and Suki sang, Mayfair Pretty Police. They stopped suddenly, and then Kayla said, Jujubes? Are you kidding me, Izzy? Oh, like, Open Sesame is any better? Suki retorted from her shower stall. What about Mayfair, Izzy said. That doesn't even make sense. Guys, guys, Sweetie called. It's Take Care, TCB. What? The three girls chorus back. What's that even mean? Suki said. Nothing, that's what, Kayla said. If you ask me, Sweetie knew the argument could go on forever, so she just launched into the Sock it to me stanza. The others fell quiet listening. This was how they were, their post-practice showers. The other girls on the team didn't even say anything. They enjoyed it when Sweetie began to sing. She shimmied in the shower, her round, robust voice echoing across the tile like a symphony of clear bells bouncing off the glinting silver faucet in shower head. When she was done, she bowed her head, letting the water rush over her, her arms held up high and triumphant. There was thunderous applause, just like every other time. Sweetie closed her eyes and smiled, enjoying this one moment when she felt supremely confident and unquestionably beautiful. Then, as the last of the applause faded, she sighed, turned off the shower, and reached for her towel. Out by her locker, Sweetie dried off and climbed into her clothes quickly. She didn't even know why she was moving quickly. It wasn't like Kayla, Suki, and Izzy would judge her, but Amma's voice echoed in her head. Cover your legs and your arms. Until you lose weight, you shouldn't wear sleeveless tops and shorts. If her mother felt that strongly about a sleeveless shirt, she could imagine what they'd say about Sweetie being naked in the girl's locker room. You slayed it as usual, girl, Kayla called from her locker. Her deep brown skin was flawless, her abdomen toned and her legs shapely. She didn't rush to put on her clothes. Thanks, you weren't so bad yourself. Sweetie smiled, trying to shake off her thoughts. She'd kick butt on the track today, beating her own best time on the 1,600-meter run. She should be feeling nothing but happiness. My body is strong and does everything I want it to do, she told herself, repeating the mantra she'd always chanted silently after one of Amma's motivational talks. I'm the fastest runner at this high school and the second fastest high school student in the state of California. It was true, too. Sweetie could leave anyone in the dust. There was a reason the local paper had called her the Piedmont Road Runner recently, but it had been a mistake to read the comments on the online article. Those were full of people who couldn't stop asking variants of the asinine question, how does she lug all of that around the track? <laughs> Coach was always telling her she could get a scholarship to pretty much any college if she kept it up. Who check this out, Suki called from her locker. She'd thrown on a skirt and top and was sitting on the bench, bent over her cell phone as usual, her straight black hair all wet. They gathered around her. It was a picture of a handsome guy in the basketball jersey on the sports page of the Times of Atherton local paper. Ashish Patel at last weekend's game, Izzy said, leaning in. Her pale cheeks were flushed from the hot shower. Yummy! 
I heard he led Richmond to another victory, Kayla said. He's their golden goose. Coach Stevens wants to poach him. Good luck with that, Izzy scoffed. His dad's a CEO of Globalcom. His kind of money would never go to a school like this. Sweetie laughed. We're not a hovel. But yeah, we're definitely not the Ivy League incubator that Richmond is either. She crossed her arms, frowning a little, as she looked at Ashish's picture. Is it just me, or does he look kind of sad to you guys? Kayla, Izzy, and Suki just looked at her blankly. What would he have to be sad about, Kayla said. The boy's got everything. Maybe on paper, Sweetie thought. Why, is your Sweetie sense going off? Suki said, laughing. Sweetie felt her cheeks get warm. She'd always been perceptive, prone to listening to her intuition about people. But Suki thought it was a bunch of crap, that Sweetie just believed what she wanted to believe. Who knew? Maybe Suki was correct. Yeah, you guys are probably right. Slinging her bag over her shoulder, Sweetie said, Hey, want to get some breakfast before class? Suki put her phone away, and her friends all stood laughing and talking about how Coach had seemed even more stressed out today than usual, chewing viciously on a wad of gum. Then she'd yelled at Andrea for not giving 110% and had almost choked on it. Sweetie kept one ear on the conversation, but her mind kept drifting back to the picture of Ashish Patel at his basketball game. What did a boy like that have to be sad about? Sweetie gave herself a mental shake. Come on, what do you care? It's not like you'll ever find out. In this quirky tale of discovering self-love and confidence, with a bit of a cute romantic twist, we discover the consequences of judging others for their appearance or body type and see that we are all so much more than just a number on a scale in There's Something About Sweetie by Sanja Menon. This is truly a series you can simply sink your teeth into. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also check out my hashtag MSM ready to read and follow me on Instagram at ms underscore martins underscore class for more new books and fun lessons that are sure to engage you and your kiddos. Be sure to tune in next week for my next Book Talk Tuesday podcast and please comment below if you've read this book or another book by the author. Thanks for watching.